Hey, it's uh, Sidrian here. Um, today I'm going to do um, I'm gonna start some bagpipe lessons on the internet, and uh, this is really just sort of more to advertise, um, like me being able to do some bagpipe lessons. Um, so if you know people in the area who would like them, uh, I've got a band that we can feed you into, and all kinds of good stuff, get you into competition. And, yeah, but first we'll start off with the very basics. This is uh, the base part of uh, practice tenor. Uh, mine is a McCallum. I recommend that if you're starting, uh, usually when you start the bagpipes, you start with the practice tenor and then eventually work your way up to a full set. Um, however, uh, if you do start with a practice tenor, get a good one. Uh, don't get a little piece of crap, uh, you know, Pakistani made. Not that there's anything wrong with Pakistan or made, but it's just. Um, as far as bagpipes go, they're kind of notorious for using mysterious wood or whatever. And this was made in Scotland. And uh, so I know it's black wood. I know it's what it's supposed to be. It's an Im imitation ivory mount on here. Um, so there's that. Um, there's nine notes on the bagpipes. If you can see the holes on here. There's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. That bottom hole lets out an eighth note. And then on the back, I don't know if you can see it with the light. I'll try and get that. There it is. That hole right there. Yeah, there's a note back there. And so, now, I guess the first thing I would do is show you how to put this together. Um, when you get one of these, usually if you bought it online or something, um, and I really would recommend the McCallums because they, they're generally good um, instruments that are in tune. Um, a lot of the other brands, the plastic ones especially, go out of tune real quick, and I don't know, I just have never really liked the sound. I mean, it just, and, and to me, as far as practicing music, um, I mean, I was kind of unfortunate with being born with perfect pitch. Everyone says it's a blessing, but it can be a curse because everything you hear is terrible sounding if it's not right on. So I would just recommend these because when you practice and it's out of tune, it just doesn't it doesn't make you want to practice. And if you if you have a good sounding instrument while you're practicing, then you're a little bit more inspired to play it. Um, so usually, what this would come with is a reed, and that's what this is right here. And it makes a nice little squeaky noise. Right? And it's probably not very pleasant sounding. And that piece goes into the reed seat right here. You see the reed seat here over here. So mirror image is it's sort of weird. And this place is right in there. Okay. Now normally, let's see here. Normally, um, you don't play it like, <laughs> like that, because that's just a pain in the butt. And, um, oboe players will play a double reed like that because you know they have to change their armature, they change the tune, the the intonation of the notes. Because um, on an oboe, there's far more notes, and they're all keyed, and it's not like bagpipes where they're out and you can just you just cover them with your fingers. There's actually like metal pieces that are covering the hole, so it's not like you can actually get in there and adjust the hole size to change the pitch. Um, right, so the way this works is, this is a pipe with a reed on the end of it, and the length of the pipe lowers each note as we go. And uh, as each hole is covered, what that does is it basically makes the pipe slightly longer. So, um, like I was saying earlier, when you carve out a hole, what that does is it changes the pitch of the tune, or the, uh, the tone the uh, note that that particular hole is at. Um, so like on an oba, you really couldn't get to it to carve it out to change the so you have to use your embouchure. Um, so yeah, bagpipes, we just have a straight airflow going over this reed. Bring it in here, center. And that's, that's the air reservoir in the practice channel. Right, so this is how 
so that you get a nice tone. Now, that's a pretty nice tone coming from McCallum, I would say. Um, and the thing is with these wood channers, um, I would recommend wood. Uh, this is a plastic top because uh, the weather affects it and all that jazz, but uh, and they, the wood can crack. So you have to take really good care of the wood stuff. Um, let's see. Any other... Well, I guess the first thing would be is fingering. Now, unlike flute or other instruments, I'm going to hold it up here so that you can see. Um, you want your fingers to be relatively straight. Um, the good way to do it is if you look down the chanter at your um, looking straight down it, your finger, fingers are make, basically making a flat board sort of look, right? Now the deal is you have three fingers, the, the left hand, and you can't do this right-handed or left-handed unless you're missing a pinky or something. Um, I have seen people do it the other way around, but it's just weird. Um, <laughs> and uh, your drones will be running into other people. It's just not a good idea. <laughs> so um, top hand is the left hand, and you have these three fingers, the index, the middle, and the ring finger, and the back thumb is on the back hole here, right? That's covering the back hole. And then the bottom four fingers, the index, middle, ring, and pinky, are down here on the bottom four holes. And the deal with the thumb is you usually want it right behind the middle finger. Now, it's different on this upper hand because you have a note here to cover. And to be honest with you, that note there does make this hand cramp up a little bit more. So the, the trick really is keeping your hands as relaxed as possible. And trust me, it's really hard to do. I've been doing this for years and it's like impossible to really relax all the way unless you super, super, super concentrate. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the scale here from the side um, before this video is over real quick. Um, and then that'll be it for lesson one. We'll do a scale. So it's the uh, one. Uh, this is uh, O G A B C D E F G A. I'll do it from the other side. Get over here. From this this angle, if you'd like. So we have G A B C D E F G A. Now here's the, the thing with A is you got the, the thumb off the back and the ring finger down. Now if any of these fingerings are wrong, it will change the intonation. So I'll play one for you real quick. And then... And that's your bagpipe scale. Uh, if you need anything, just email me, sidrian at gmail.com, or, uh, yeah, just let me know. I'm giving out bagpipe lessons. Uh, they're not free, but uh, relatively cheap, so uh, hit me up on the email. Thank you.